Why do trees hate riddles? It's because they get stumped too easily. You're welcome. <laughs>from time to time you're gonna hear me mention my one spirit guide that is a dryad which is also a type of tree spirit aka a type of plant diva you know they have many names for them but in this video i'm going to be diving more into dryads and tree spirits because you know what yolo and this shit is interesting but if you haven't watched the previous video about plant spirits you should definitely check it out because, you know, I give more information on the benefits and the amazing work that they do. So check that out. And yeah, we're going to get into uh, dryads. Now, depending on the culture or region that a person is from, it's going to depend on the name of these spirits. Each one has their own name. So, you know, for example, you, you can have... Names such as Tree Diva, Tree Nymph, Tree Fairy, Tree Spirits, etc. I will alternate between all of those. But information about these beings go back thousands of years. So I'll be going into some of their background and speak about my most recent experience where I was pulled into a realm with another psychic medium. And yeah. We'll be talking about that and that experience. So, buckle up, buttercup. Here we go. Background information. We're going to be talking about some of the different, you know, myths and origins. They are fascinating creatures in Greek mythology, often depicted as nymphs or spirits of the trees. They are closely associated with nature and embody the essence of the trees they protect. Each dryad is believed to be born with a specific tree, which they nurture and share a deep bond with throughout their existence. The origin of dryads can be traced back to the ancient belief that every tree had its own spirit. These spirits were thought to be the life force of the tree and dryads were the embodiments of these spirits. They were considered guardians of the forest, responsible for the well-being and protection of their respective trees. According to mythology, when a tree died, the associated dryad would fade away as well. Conversely, if a tree was harmed, the dryad would feel the pain and suffer. Due to this connection, dryads were often revered and respected by ancient Greeks as they held a deep appreciation for the importance of nature and the preservation of the environment. Now, my guy just told me, so it's kind of like, so they don't die, die, die. Like, okay, the, the physical body of the tree, you know, is then that energy, like humans, is then transformed into other types of energy. So the spirit itself doesn't disappear forever. It then gets put in that or it then gets put into the cycle again of like reincarnation and then, you know, it'll be reborn as something else. Thank you, spirit. Thank you. So dryads are often depicted as beautiful and ethereal maidens dressed in flowing garments made of leaves or bark. They are known for their gentle and nurturing nature and their presence is said to bring a sense of tranquility and harmony to the surrounding forest. Now, you know, this is just like Greek mythology. However, I will say from experiences, I've seen them in both genders, but more often than not on the astral when I see them, they almost look genderless, except for their facial features that have more of feminine vibe to them. But my spirit guide is a male and he comes across as a human male just because that is what I'm most comfortable and used to 
and easy to identify him as my guide. So he presents himself in a human form. But, you know, naturally, they kind of look like Groot. If you've ever seen Guardians of the Galaxy, they look like Groot and kind of genderless. I'm sure you have ones that have more gender aspects to their body. But the ones I've seen look kind of more genderless, but very, like, feminine in the face. And, like, their arms and legs are branches. And, like, they have pieces of tree coming out of their body. They got leaves, bark. And, yeah, they look like a tree, but, like, a humanoid tree. In Greek mythology, dryads were believed to be the daughters of the mighty god Zeus and the goddess of the earth Gaia. They were considered a part of the vast network of natural spirits known as nymphs. The word dryad itself is derived from the Greek word dries, which means oak. Dryads were often associated with specific types of trees, including oak, ash, pine, and laurel, among others. Each dryad was believed to be an individual entity with her own distinct personality and characteristics. They were seen as protectors of their trees, ensuring their health and vitality. Ancient Greeks held the belief that harming a tree or disrespecting the natural environment could bring about the wrath of dryads. And you know, that's why, you know, elementals kind of fit in that neutral category because some of them have their own personalities, right? And you piss it off, it's going to maybe react. But not all plant spirits are, you know, like this. There are more pure ones. And so, like I said, there are different kinds of each spirit. So just keep that in mind. It was common for them to offer prayers and make offerings to the dryads, seeking their favor and protection. These offerings often consisted of small tokens like flowers, honey, or milk placed at the base of a tree. Dryads were not only associated with trees, but also had connections to other natural elements. They were believed to have the ability to control and manipulate the weather, particularly winds and breezes. They were also thought to have the power to communicate with other woodland creatures and had a deep understanding of plant and animal life, which I do believe. In North mythology, tree spirits were known as, and I'm going to say this wrong and I'm sorry, Ronnie, correct me if you want, because you're really good at that stuff, especially the Norse mythology pronunciation, but Deser, 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 I'm not sure, I'm sorry. It's spelled D. I with the S-I-R. These female spirits were associated with particular trees and were believed to have the power to protect and bless those who treated the trees with respect. The Desir were also associated with fate and were believed to have the ability to influence the course of human lives. In Celtic mythology, tree spirits were called Ace. Sidhe, 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 I'm sorry again, S-I-D-H-E. They were believed to reside in ancient sacred trees and were seen as guardians of the forest. The Aesidae were often depicted as beautiful, magical beings with the ability to communicate with animals and shapeshift into different forms. So that makes sense as to why, like, my spirit guide is originally, like, a tree spirit and then can shapeshift. Um, tree spirits are not limited to those mythologies, as similar beliefs exist in various cultures worldwide. For example, in Japanese folklore, there are spirits called Kodama that ex- inhabit trees, particularly old and sacred ones. These spirits are often depicted as small, ghost-like creatures. Um, it's interesting because these creatures, these beings, these spirits, have been betrayed in media. So, a few examples, Pocahontas. Remember, she speaks to that one tree spirit and it gives her advice and whatnot. That's an example. Another one, a more goofy example, are um, if you watch Monty Python and the Holy Grail, you have these tree people and they're like, we are the knights who say knee or ick, 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 blah, blah, blah. It also reminded me of um, the tree people in the Lord of the Rings, like the massive trees. 
but those are just some examples. More information. Tree spirits are often depicted as ethereal and beautiful beings, usually female. They are sometimes shown with long flowing hair, wearing leafy or bark-like garments, and adorned with flowers or other natural elements. Their appearance can vary depending on the culture and mythology they belong to. Yeah, because depending on the region that they're located, they're going to fit more the standard of the people that live there because that's what the people there are used to and they're going to want to make those people more comfortable, if that makes sense. So roles and abilities. Tree spirits are believed to have a deep connection with the trees they inhabit. They are often considered guardians of the forests in the natural world. They are said to possess magic abilities and can communicate with animals, control the growth and health of trees, and have the power to bless or curse individuals who interact with their trees. I'm gonna add some to that too. So they have healing abilities. They can um, help you ground and they can purify energy as well. And I've experienced that firsthand. And through communication, they absolutely can communicate with other animals. They can also bridge the gap between our physical world and other realms because they're, they're more of a direct link to those realms. Relationship with humans. Tree spirits are generally portrayed as benevolent beings, but they can also be mischievous or even vengeful if their trees are mistreated or harmed. Many cultures have traditions and beliefs emphasizing the importance of respecting and honoring trees to maintain harmony with tree spirits in the natural environment. Worship and offerings. In ancient times, people would often make offerings to tree spirits to seek their protection or blessings. These offerings could include flowers, fruits, or even small tokens placed around the base of the tree. In some cultures, specific rituals and ceremonies were conducted to honor and appease the tree spirits. So when I was communicating with the tree spirit in my yard, I gave it some crystals because, well, that's all I really had. But I also felt like because of the area in which I live in, it could use some uh, natural crystals to like help energize itself, even though technically it doesn't need it, but also they're pretty and they like crystals. So that's why I did that. Symbolism. Tree spirits are often seen as symbols of life force and vitality of nature. These symbolize the interconnectedness of all living beings and the importance of preserving and respecting the natural world. Because again, plant spirits are natural nature conservationists. They also represent the cycle of life, death, and rebirth, as they are closely tied to the growth and seasons of the trees they inhabit. Modern interpretations. Tree spirits continue to inspire artists, writers, and filmmakers. They are often featured in fantasy literature and movies where they are portrayed as mystical and magical beings. Additionally, some Individuals today still hold beliefs in the existence of tree spirits and may engage in practices such as tree hugging or <laughs> nature conservation to honor and connect with the tree spirits. Okay, so my experiences. So episode before this one where I talked about plant spirits, I did talk about like the initial meeting of the dryad in my front yard, but even before that, so I have a bunch of spirit guides, as you guys may already know, and each one serves a purpose. They have their own like skill set. But I learned that the one spirit guide that I have is actually originally a tree spirit or a dryad. And this was confirmed by Liv from Metapsychics. I actually got a reading from her like a little bit more than six months ago. It was really interesting, and yeah, she validated a lot of the stuff I, you know, had felt with my guides. My spirit guide, tree spirit guide, has been teaching me about herbal remedies and herbal things that will help with my chronic illnesses and allergies to everything. In addition to healing the inflammation within my body and releasing negative energy buildup more effectively, because my strongest ability is clairsentience. If you don't know what clairsentience is, go watch the clairsentience video. Anyway, <laughs> so he had me connect to the tree spirit 
dryad in my front yard. I'm pretty sure it was his doing that had me do that in the first place. Even though I have three or four other dryads in my yard, for whatever reason, the one that I was drawn to has more of a presence and it just felt right. That one's been helping me release the negative energy and ground myself more in a physical manner by having me place both of my hands on the tree and just like visualizing that energy going into the tree and going out the branches and being purified. There's actually two like, so my neighborhood, I always make the joke that my neighborhood's spiritually fucked <laughs> because of like, it's a city and there's so much negative energy from all the thought forms and the people there and however, there with the trees that are there there's a quite a few dryads in my neighborhood on my street alone and there are some that are more present than others but i'm more drawn to the one in my yard luckily because it would be weird going into somebody's yard going to their tree and then being like what the fuck are you doing could you imagine that they'd be calling the police or they come out with like a gun and be like get off my lawn <laughs> and I'm just standing there like <laughs> anyway but okay so here's the big long experience that I had with another psychic medium so I was on this large airplane on the astral realm with a bunch of people including Melinda the Mystic Witch shout out to her and if she has any recollection of this I would be very interested to know her perspective of things but a lot of times it's like we'll be in each other's ashram experiences and sometimes we'll remember them but there are other times that it's like so much shit has happened that it's hard to recall that's why I write everything down but she was there and there was an emergency landing situation and everyone on the plane is like panicking and freaking out. I go to the front, start asking questions because it seemed really freaking strange and odd because it didn't feel like there was anything wrong with the plane. It was just like the plane was lowering and we're like, what's going on? And then like we talked to the people on the plane and they were like, oh, there's, you know, something wrong with the electrical mechanics of the plane. And for everyone's safety, we have to make an emergency landing somewhere remote. And then when we landed, we are in some enchanted forest situation. It kind of looks similar to the enchanted forest in that TV show, Once Upon a Time. But it was more magical looking, but had slightly darker undertones. It was weird. It was weird. Kind of cool, but weird. But, you know, as we're coming down and we're getting out of the airplane, we see these camps that look like human trafficking camps and you know Melinda and I are looking at each other like what the fuck is going on um, we are forced to get in line with all the passengers that were on the plane the people in charge of this camp were in a brown uniform that I didn't recognize and I do remember them having like a it looked like a strap, a black strap that went across their body. And the uniforms kind of reminded me of like, I don't want to say like World War II uniforms of like another country, but it kind of just gave me like guerrilla warfare, but like more modern, but like, I don't know. I don't know how else to describe it. But so yeah, we're in line. They force us in line and they're separating the females out from the group, especially the younger ones, the younger and healthy ones, I should say. And they're asking everyone these personal questions like age, health questions, um, and so on. It felt like they were trying to see the potential of childbearing females, which is kind of fucked up. They get to me and I tell them all my issues and how I can't have kids because I don't have any reproductive like organs anymore. They get to Melinda and she says she's older than she really is. And she says, oh, I'm 59 years old. And in my head, in my head, I'm just thinking that they weren't gonna buy that because she looks way younger than she actually is. I don't know, but you know, um, being on the Asheram and stuff, 
we can transform our appearance to look however we want. But so, but to me, she looked like Melin, like regular Melinda, with her pretty blonde hair and young. But the thing is, too, when you're on the astral realm, and if you're experienced enough, you can see people's true form even if they're looking or transformed into something else. But after that. They put us on one of those caravan bus things, and as we're going through the magical forest, I see all these dryads giving us concerned looks and telepathically telling me we were in danger. They were so beautiful and unsettling at the same time. They looked like humans made of bark, branches, and leaves, just like Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy, but more infused with the trees. Their bodies look more feminine and slender, but didn't have many gender-revealing attributes. It was more their facial features that looked feminine, as I said, but they had a weepy and sad energy to them, which is much different from the ones that I've come into contact with in my yard and just like other places. Um, at some point, her and I do escape, but we get separated. And as I'm running, I come across what looks like a training compound with different people that aren't from the same group and temporarily seek refuge there until I feel danger looming again and then I escape the realm entirely. But I just remember running and just like, gotta get out of here, can't get caught, and them chasing after me. And it's like I get to that um, refuge area and it's like they're behind, like they're on my tail. So I could only rest there for like a few moments. And then I had to get up and go again. And yeah, I was able to get out of there because of my spirit guide. So that is my longer experience. Very vivid. But guys, what did you think about that? Do you guys have any experiences with plant spirits or tree spirits? I'm very curious. I know metapsychics they talk about all the different entities and stuff. And even on the Lights of Midnight podcast, we do talk about the different entities. And you can check out those episodes too. There's just so much going on spirit-wise that most people can't fathom. And, you know, in the beginning of this journey of my awakening, I did not fathom all the possibilities of things that existed. But now it's like, I'm seeing everything everywhere and I'm just like, this is so cool. But also, I'm learning so much and it's a lot to take in. But yeah, guys, thank you guys for sticking around for this long. And again, if you have any questions, thoughts, concerns, leave them down below. I will see you tomorrow, tomorrow. There's always tomorrow. If you guys like learning about different types of entities, I highly recommend watching the video where I talk about thought forms and what they are, what they do, and how they are one of the most common types of hauntings a person can have.